Part 2. Here's the kit, our stock, built out of the box, no paint, not too impressive, looks okay. It's a good base to work from. Then here, with bare plastic, minimal paint, marker pens and weathering. Yeah, Gundam marker pens. Giveaway. Yes, I'm giving this away. Please click the button top right of your screen. At the end of this video, if you'd like more details, my supporters have access to a 22 minute super detailed version. Here I was, all excited to be getting ready to move on to next steps with the weathering, and I realized I forgot to paint their white. So, what to do? Instead of messing about and getting the acrylics going again, I realized that I've got these, uh, these lovely lacquer paints just sitting around. Um, it had dried up inside the little porcelain dish that I keep them in, so adding a little dash of uh, lacquer thinner here got it reactivated. And uh, it, it's up and ready for duty straight away. It's brilliant stuff. Love it. Now, quick tip. When you're uh, remixing this stuff and getting to go with it, now here I'm going just straight onto the plastic. I'm not going to bother about any thinner. I'm just going to whack on a good thick solid single coat here to show you how effective this stuff can be. Now just a quick uh, tip that I mentioned, the uh, make sure that the, the, the layers to the bottom of your dish are reactivated because at first the, um, the top color type carrier layers will reactivate with the paint. Uh, make sure you're digging down to the, uh, the solid substrate levels uh, that will be necessary to, uh, to to make the paint strong and for it to hold together. So just dig down until you're getting porcelain or plastic, whatever you're using for your uh, your paint dish. Make sure you dig down. You're getting all of the layers reactivated. Then your paint is uh, it's like brand new paint again and it's ready to go. There's no curing with this paint. It never actually sets up chemically. You can always reactivate it and get it ready to go. Now see how it's kind of self highlighting here. I'm using it. You know th th this is. This is my experience with it showing. See how the uh, the under shadow there of the details of the paint, the details of the model are showing through there, and it actually looks really cool just on one layer. Uh, that will take a bit of practice. You're not going to be able to achieve that on your first one or two tries, but it's a, it's something to aim for, and I think it's a good illustrated uh, usage of it here. Next, I want to add in some uh, darker background detail. So I'm I'm pinching, I'm stealing a color from the Machine and Krieger property using RLM 66 black gray here, and it's a wonderful uh, it's a wonderful color for taking away the attention and adding kind of a background detail shadow color to uh, to things. And I, I want it to be relatively dark, so I'm adding it to a dish here that already had some black in it. And that will go back to uh, material we've covered in other videos that adding a little bit of black paint to any of our colors will then give us a shade, a slightly darker version of it. Moving in here for the detail work, now again, you can use any kind of paint for this. You could use acrylic, enamel, or lacquer paint as I'm using here. Uh, because it's a recessed panel, it's not going to be bumped, uh, so durability is not really a problem. The, uh, the surface tension of this paint though is great, you know, so I'm just dropping it into the, uh, the lines in here, straight in on top of the, uh, the plastic. It will dry and uh, set in there nicely, and uh, we're, we're done with it. That, that'll be everything done in one step, no primer, nothing required whatsoever. Fine, done, good, boom! Too much? A little bit too much there? Okay, I'll, I'll take it down a notch. <laughs> okay. I want to show you something really cool. Now sometimes life beckons, you know, life outside of plastic modeling and YouTube happens. Really? And uh, so I've got to drop everything and run off and, uh, and, and deal with some issue, right? Like Minecraft, something's happening and the kid needs help with figuring out what to do on the crafting table. So what I do is I cover these, these plates up. I just put one of their opposite you know, I put another version of itself on top of it, to, and it makes a light seal, it's not perfect, and I leave it, I can come back, chuck a little bit of thinner in it, and boom, again, we're, we're off and running. It's really brilliant stuff. Here's a quick chance, I've moved in for a close-up. I wanted to, uh, to show you the consistency that I like to work with for um, a semi-wash detail coverage sort of paint. So it, it's not uh, base coating like I've shown you up until now. Uh, it's not quite as thin as a glaze. But this would be for filling in these kind of background details when you, you don't want the brush to be doing the work. You want the paint to be, you know, pulling its fair share. You want the paint to be flowing into the recesses and details. So I mix it up to about this level of consistency. Like that. Here we go, getting that paint to do its fair share of the work for us. I'm, um, I'm painting close to the details but not getting right up on them. Now you need your brush pretty loaded. Get loaded with this one. So uh, a reasonably, you know, decent, good, medium-sized round brush that can hold a lot of paint. Uh, sidle up to your details, uh, push against the plastic, and let the paint flow in there. Uh, you don't need to be touching it in with the point. Uh, letting it flow and letting it run into the uh, run into the recesses there is what you want this time. 
Now do pick your targets, you know, don't use this method if it's going to run in there and ruin something or it's going, it's going to go over some white paint that we've done before. Um, I'm doing it on these areas, it's the back of the model, not that concerned about it. Have you ever noticed with the Gunpla genre, we don't show models from behind. Gunpla is all about being shown from up front. Now I've got some ideas on that. Gunpla, Gundam, the animation that it's based on, is a very dynamic, fast moving uh, type of uh, action scene uh, show. So all of the uh, the suits are best shown and represented from their frontal aspect because you know that that's the main character development that uh, that is shown in in the animation. You know, we we recognize these suits and the characters that they belong to from the front. So uh, these these objects, uh, suits, machines, what have you, the designs, they're drawn. Uh, predominantly, I would say they spend 90%, 95% of the time in the in the, the design phase of, uh, of working them out would be drawing them to make them look cool from the front in hero poses. Um, they're not designed as 3D creations as such, but they do need to, of course, fill in the back. You can't have the, the back without the front. Now, how do I know this? Well, I predominantly, most of the work I've done is with the 3D property. So I work with the machine in Krieger. Of stuff and that was designed as a as a 3D object. Uh, I don't mean like three 3D. I mean it was actually put together in somebody's hands. They're they're, they're real uh, physical models that were uh, they weren't drawn first. They were put together with somebody's hands first. So they have a, a definite 3D aspect to their design. Whereas most of say Gumpla, uh, Robotech, Macross, etc., the the really famous ones on that side. They were put together as drawings first. They would they would they were drawn and sketched out first from certain hero poses. Um, they've nailed that in putting them together. Then they need to tweak how they look from other angles. Um, how does that help us as modelers? Well, it doesn't. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it, this is this is kind of one of those irrelevant uh, side tracks that I've gotten I've gotten into. But where I'll bring it together for you is when you're showing these models, uh, don't don't try to go against how they were designed. The Gunplay I noticed in particular, they only look good from a certain handful of angles. You have to be careful to put them in the correct sort of hero poses for them to look cool. And uh, you'll know what I mean. Go to a Facebook feed or somewhere where there's a l large volume of content. And uh, when they're not posed well, they look very static and, uh, you know, love doll Judy sort of deal. But uh, if they're posed well, uh, and you use one of the action bases, for example, uh, Gunpla really come to life. So uh, that, that's just a, an aside that I thought was interesting and I wanted to share with you guys. Hope that's cool. Uh, back to white. You know, I uh, got the great details done. And, uh, you know, I was joking with you guys. Do you remember I said that uh, I, I hope I don't have to do white paint again after uh, full hand painting of white on that lupus? Uh, well, here's that same paint, and uh, you know, like a week later, I'm painting bloody white again. So uh, I, I've, I've remixed it here. Uh, I, I let it set just a few minutes. This is uh, it's, it's in the space of say 30, 40 minutes between using it just a moment ago. I wanted to give you a bit of a close-up straight into the camera here of about the kind of consistency you need to aim for. And uh, this time. I'm not going to prime it. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to paint straight over the bare plastic again with white. Now, one of the good things about this is that uh, because this is a, a sandy color, you know, uh, light earth colored model, beige, so beige, that uh, the uh, poking through the white, for some reason, the beige sandy color poking through white looks really cool. It's kind of got that, you know, the whole Axis armor whitewash sort of thing and uh, doing it this way you kind of you've got a little hack going in that it's it will give you some chips that will look quite realistic because you know our eyes and mind are telling us okay this this thing is made out of uh, sandy color armor so we know the white is a detail somehow you know we're dudes we know how things work so we figured we figured out that the white is probably added on afterwards if we show a little bit of the the the, the, the beige I've got to stop saying it like that, but it just sounds so lame, doesn't it? Beige. If we, if we have a little bit of the beige armor poking through, our mind tells us, hey, that's chipped because this guy's been seeing action. Um, so that's what I've gone for with, with here. Sometimes skipping the primer, not only does it save you a bunch of time with our economy of effort deal, but um, you can use that as an advantage to make something look extra cool as well. And uh, here, that's that.
here's a goof. I forgot to turn the camera on. And whilst I didn't have it on, I did this. Idiot, right? I feel so much better now having come clean with you about that. You know, I feel like I, I've re-established our, our, our mutually beneficial relationship and that you'll, you'll trust me again. Now, I uh, fixed that one up. I, I usually paint things fully, fully uh, completely, fully put together, but uh, so I pulled that off just to give good access to the uh, to that area that I wanted to paint gray, paint gray there. And uh, the good thing about these gunpla is you, know, you don't need to be putting much paint uh, glue on them. Excuse me. Now paint you do because the stickers look terrible. I mean, the stickers look like stickers, and uh, they're great if you're you know. I was going to say 12, but my daughter's nine and she doesn't like the stickers. So we've got a base level there established of nine years old. From then on, you should be painting these things. Now, using the white that I've used before, uh, this, this uh, Gundam uh, white from Mr. Color, I'm going straight on to the, uh, the plastic here again. It's a small area, so um, you could use, yeah, I know a hundred people are going to ask me, could I use acrylic for this? And I'll, I'll share one secret straight off. This lacquer paint is actually acrylic paint, but it's a solvent-based acrylic paint. Now, I know that's going to trip some people out. Lacquer paint isn't a separate creature whatsoever. Lacquer paint, lacquer paints are acrylic paints. It's an acrylic polymer compound contained in it, but instead of water, alcohol, or something, they've got a mix of them and the lacquer compound as well. What does that mean? Nothing. Just use what you like and is good. Going back to what I was babbling about, if you want to use a soft acrylic paint, that's how I should probably call them, like Vallejo, Ammo, etc. for this part, good. I'll say yes to that one. Definitely for these top parts, you're not going to be handling it much probably. Uh, it's a small area. Those paints do shine for painting small area details like this. Uh, there you can see I'm really admiring that, aren't I, putting it into the camera like that. I'm saying, you know, did you see that? Now I'm feeling pretty confident about my little detail painting skills and I got the white paint. See that area I indicated there? There's no sticker indicated for it, but just as an overall color balance, uh, detail balance thing, these need to be white. Uh, it's not canon. Uh, this is my first little, you know, step away from following the instructions. I just decided in my color balance sense and my robot uh, sense that, you know, th these knee sections, just to balance out the other details as seen on the model, they, they should have been white. Leaving them blank is uh, it's kind of a missed opportunity to make the model look cool. So, no, I've uh, I've lashed out and I'm going to make this part white. See, it matches up with the uh, the elbows, the little insert on the wrist, uh, the the top part of the head there. It just as a design thing, you know, the uh, the balancing of it and the the way it's spaced out, it works really well. And Subsequent to finishing this, I'm pretty happy I did it too. It was just one of those little things, you know, I'm always telling people to let stuff go, but I'll be really honest, sometimes things bug the you know what out of me. And this was one of those things. I just looked at it and I said, like, come on, you guys were just being lazy. Paint the knees white. So uh, I ponied up and did it. And uh, I'm pretty happy I did. I think it's a really good look to it. I couldn't agree with myself more once again. So there we go. I'm going to spend all afternoon editing out these idiot comments, aren't I? Congratulations on making it through the boss level of this and all the way through to the end. Uh, sorry if I dragged on a bit there and laughed a bit too much at my own jokes, but I hope there's some value in there for you too. Uh, next up, I finally got through all the detail stuff on this. For a minimalist project, it's quite maximal, isn't it? So last, we uh, weathering. We'll get on with that and uh, I'll show you some really cool stuff with it, okay? Cheers, guys. Thanks. Bye. Appreciate your support. Boom.